Howdy everyone. Uh, there might be times when your editing or photography needs just a little bit of extra tweaking and playing around with the photo more than you would in the develop module. And so today we're gonna jump into the editor module and take a look at how we can do some uh, basic adjustments there and take your editing or manipulation skills to another level. Okay, so as I just said, the editor module is going to be used for more substantial adjustments to our photographs. For example, say you want to replace the sky or background in your picture, add an object, or just remove something that you don't like. This is a perfect task suited to the editor module. And to reiterate, adjustments that go beyond classic editing in the develop module is where the editor module comes into play. And speaking of the develop module, let's go ahead and compare what we can do with the develop module versus the editor module. The develop module should be the core for our photography editing. So basic adjustments like the photo's color, cast, and exposure, and so forth. But when that's not enough, then we can move into the editor module where you can fine tune each pixel. There we have a wider range of tools, including selection tools, various brushes, masks, layers, you get the idea. Let's check out where we can find the editor module. As the editor module is one of the modules of Zoner Photo Studio X, you can find it up here on the top right among the other modules. But before we look at everything the editor module can do, there's still something worth mentioning. The editor module is designed for working with common file formats like JPEG, TIFF, or PNG. And you can also open raw image files from your camera, meaning file extensions with ARW, CR2, and others. But Zonar Photo Studio X converts this raw file in the workspace, and it cannot be converted back to raw in the editor module. Okay, at first glance, the editor module looks very similar to the other modules of Zonar Photo Studio X. On the left, you'll find the navigator, and you can hide this when working on a photo. At the bottom, you can choose whether you want to display or hide the film strip. And as you get into more extensive editing with the editor module, we think it's a good idea to hide the film strip as you'll mainly be working with the tools in the right side panel. And it's just best to avoid having this huge cluster of tools uh, when you're editing. It just makes everything more streamlined and aesthetically pleasing. There are two main sections in the right side panel. The first is the histogram which shows you where the photo is in terms of the light and dark areas. And the second part is a layers list that you work with in the editor, and we'll get to those in just a moment. Now let's take a look at the tools available to you in the editor module. They're found in this toolbar right here. The first is pan and zoom, represented by the hand icon. Use it to view the photo in detail, zoom in and out, and pan. Next, we've got the move and transform, it's useful for adding an object to the photo or certain adjustments that you need to move around in the photo. Of course, if you don't like a certain adjustment, you can always undo it using the keyboard shortcut Control Z, as you know from classic Windows operations, or you can use these arrows here for undoing and redoing. The next tool is Crop, which is pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to do this now though because I'm very happy with how this photo looks right now. You can also find the tool for straightening lines that you're already familiar with from the develop module, so we're not gonna dive any deeper into that one either. But what you won't find in the develop module are selection tools, and they're found here, and this icon indicates the entire group of tools. You can select using rectangles, ellipses, or circles. And then there are what are called lassos. For example, you can use this polygonal lasso to select an area defined by individual segments. Click the starting point to finish the selection. And selection is used to select only a part of a photo that you will edit. If I were to choose one of the brush tools, I can quickly access that using the keyboard shortcut B and start drawing something random in the photo like this. And the selection makes sure that I'm only editing this selected area and nothing else in the entire photo. Okay, I'm going to undo this random drawing now, and I can also cancel the selection using the escape key. You can learn more about the selection tool in some of our other videos, which we'll place a link to below this one. 
In the editor modules toolbar, you'll also find tools for red eye reduction, retouching, and distortion. We've made videos and written articles about each of these tools, so I'm not gonna go into detail about those here. Next, you'll find tools for placing text. There's a pre-fill text that you can change, like this. We can choose font and text color, and we can even select the color directly from the photo. Notice that the text is added as another layer, and now is a good time that we jump into layers and how they work. It's important to understand how layers function in order to master the editor module in Zonar Photo Studio X. A common example is an image composed of several layers. Each of these layers contains either an entire image, part of an image, or just an adjustment. Now let's go back to our image, which, by the way, is from one of our Zonar ambassadors, Zdenka. So shout out to her and thank you for letting us use one of your photos. All right, we can see each of the layers here. I added one of the layers, and now I'll show you how easy it is to delete this text layer. Okay, right-click the layer, select Delete Layer, and it's gone. Just like we showed you with the Move tool, each layer can be moved. And now I'm going to the Move and Transform tool, which is the keyboard shortcut V, and show you how easy it is to move something that's in a layer again. Notice how the green points or the green illumination has moved, which obviously doesn't work here. I'm going to put them back, but you can tell that the points are drawn in a new layer, and I can also hide and reveal this layer. It's best to start simple when starting out with the editor module and work your way to more complex projects. Having 15 or 20 layers and a bunch of complicated adjustments is not going to help you and it's not the best way to learn. So start with a single layer, and once you retouch something, make a second or even a third layer if you're making other adjustments. Simply put, if you have multiple adjustments, you should have multiple layers. Each adjustment or adjustment layer can be turned on and off or even limited. And this is the biggest strength of the editor module. Thanks to layers, you can do these things and play around with the image until you're happy with it. All right, let's go back to our demonstration image. You can see I have a layer in, uh, that's titled Arrow. I'm going to cancel uh, the Move and Transform tool by pressing the Escape key. And then I find the layer with the arrow and I can see that I have it added here. I can also easily hide it like this. Or I might think to myself, I don't like this arrow and I'm going to try and make a different arrow or just change its color slightly by making it bigger or smaller. I can copy this layer using a duplicate layer, hide the previous layer, and now play with the newly added layer, which I have aptly renamed arrow number two. Now let's go back to the transformation tool. I'll make the arrow just a bit larger, move it, and click apply. Now I think I'd like to have a slightly different color, which brings me to each layer's specific adjustments. These adjustments are found under the Adjustments button. When you expand this menu, uh, you find many options for changing the image data for each specific layer. For instance, I can select Enhance Colors. And then for this layer, I can easily change the hue of the arrow uh, to a color, even if it doesn't fit. You know, we can do whatever we want and we can change it back again if it just doesn't work like this. If I decide that I don't like this adjustment at all, it's easy to hide the arrow number two layer by deleting it and then just showing the previous arrow layer. So I'd like to give you one more tip for editing layers in the editor module. And you may have noticed that there's plenty of editing functions that you just really don't need or are never really going to use. And it's just cluttering up the UI unnecessarily. So let's clean that up and make it easier and just select those functions that we're actually going to be using. And the way we do that is we can add a few functions. Let's say we commonly use blur, color enhancement, or curves. I can add those functions that I use most often to my favorites or our favorites. And we do that by clicking this star on the right of each said function or tool. And if we already have some functions saved in our favorites that we don't need, we can easily remove them from the favorites category, again, by just clicking that star on the right side. 
So this way I can easily create a list of the most frequently used functions and hide the remaining sections. And there, it doesn't look so daunting anymore. And whenever I return to adjustments, I'll only find my favorites. Okay, that's it. Oh wait, there's another step I forgot about. We'll need to save the file. And we can't save an image broken into layers to any of the standard formats like JPEG or PNG. We will have to save it to a special format that has the .zps file extension in Zonar Photo Studio X. This format is ideal because if we use the ZPS file extension to save a work in progress, we'll save our work in a format that can be opened by Zonar Photo Studio X and we'll be able to edit the layers once again. On the other hand, if we're done editing or we just want to show it to someone else, etc., it's a good idea now to save it as one of the standard or into this one of the standard formats such as JPEG. In this case, Zonar Photo Studio X takes all the layers we have, squashes them together, and creates a final image, uh, which we can then save as the new file, which we'll open and share with others. And this is good to do for practical reasons because .zps files contain a lot of data of all the masks, layers, adjustments, et cetera, that we've done, and the file itself is actually quite large. Okay, so this completes our brief introduction to the editor module in Zoner Photo Studio. I hope it was informative and at least helped you or point you in the right direction. Don't forget to check out our other videos and until next time, I'll see you later.